Chiri Rodman. Chiri, with over five decades of award-winning success, specializes in transforming voices for singers and speakers. She has worked with professionals who have achieved remarkable success, including Grammy winners, NYT bestsellers, and performers at major venues and TV shows. Jiri's mission is to empower voices with impactful messages. She's also known for her work as a vocal producer on various projects led by vocal producers and as an author of vocal training courses. Additionally, she hosts the popular All Things Vocal blog and podcast. Jiri is a sought-after public speaker on professional voice and vocal. Local careers. Her clients have achieved recognition on various prestigious platforms, and she's currently coaching the cast of an upcoming Disney series. And because we are passionate about your sound, here are the making musical quantum lips grand finale for the 30-day podcast. Everything vocal registers the sensational Judy Rodman. It doesn't matter what you feel because the, the evidence that you're getting a message through is you get, it's an acting technique. You get a response, not oh. from anyone except the one heart you're talking to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You get a response and from the one heart you're talking to. So you don't care about what the audience, how they're responding. Mm -hmm. You don't care about how you're feeling. You care about what you're ma making that person feel and you're not a mind reader. So you have to see the body language freeze yeah. or the little tear in their eye or them starting to sway along with you yeah. because they're feel you're feeling what you're talking about. So you have to use your imagination because you can't usually see the person that you're talking to, yes. but in your mind's eye, that's your raison d'etre. That's your main reason for making a sound to get a response that you want yeah. from that one heart. What response do you want? The one that's authentically, you know, means that you're getting through successfully. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to say something three different ways, and I'm going to be talking to three different people wanting three different responses. All right. All right. You'll see yeah. how this works. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to say the words, you better not do that again. And I'll say it to three different people looking for three different responses. The first one is, uh, I'm angry because I mean, I'm, I really want to warn them. They better, you know, mm -hmm. all right, here we go. You better not do that again. Second way I'm talking to a little kid and I actually want them to do it again. Okay? <laughs> you better not do that again. Third way, I'm talking to a friend that's about to get themselves into trouble and I really care about them. You better not do that again. Okay. So why did my voice change? Did, did I think about the tone I was going to make? How much air I was going to put there? What no. my posture, what my face would, no. No. I'm thinking about the, response. the response you're going to, oh yes. <laughs> that's the key to stage fright. That's the key to getting the emotion right, the exact, and there's lots of different ways to do it. It's acting technique. It's yeah. making a choice. I'm talking to this person and I want this response. And let's see, how can I do that? How does my voice need to sound to get that to, for response. me to successfully get that response? Yeah. Wow. This is... So you might not even be in the mood to sing that song that night. Yeah. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Wow, this is so, I, this is, <laughs> it's blowing my mind, it's blowing, it's blowing my mind. So it, in the end, it's, it's not about you. It's not about you, it's about the response you want to get. And you will do anything to get that. Like, how, how, you won't, you don't have to think, when I'm, when I'm trying to, just like you said, when I'm trying to warn someone, I don't, I don't start to think of how dark my voice is going to be, how loud I need to be. I just do it because I'm doing it with an intention to get a response from that person. This is so eye-opening. This is, this is beautiful. <laughs> and all of the technique in the world that any of us vocal coaches can teach anyone should be in the service of yes, delivering it should be, the message. Yeah, the end, it should, be, it should be a means to an end to delivering exactly. the message. Wow, wow. This is, this is my highlight in this board. This, this has to be my <laughs> highlight. <laughs> this has to be my highlight. Okay. 
how important oops, uh, do I need to ask this question? Okay, in we've spoken about one challenge people have with uh, the mix, with getting the mix. We've spoken about the challenge with with pulling when when you're trying to get a seamless mix. We've spoken about one challenge, which is it's either they are having the classical challenge, which is pulling the the head voice too low or Tuck down too far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or they are having the contemporary challenge, which is pulling the chest voice far too high. So right. what other challenge do you think singers have when um, mixing the two registers? Well, one, one thing... Or, you know, uh, looking up like that, raising the chin and stuff like that. So a challenge live is to think of this, this pulling idea, think of it as you're the magnet you pull the listener into you yeah. rather than push the message at them. And also when you're walking the stage, walk knees first, not nose first. <laughs> and also, and, and just and use your mic in such a way that your head is balanced over your tailbone or your heels yeah. instead of the balls of your feet. Mm -hmm. So that your compression engine, pelvic floor compression engine is working. Uh, you press your heel down on stage, that's that's your power center. Yeah. And that's going to create uh, the situation where this 45 degree uh, pipe, that's a uni unification of the chest and head voice pipes, yeah. right? Yeah. Opens. It's, it's open like that. And then all you have to do is if you do move forward to into the audience, move forward in such a way that your head is still over your tailbone. Yeah. So you can move forward like that. But you, you, if you do it right, your rib cage is still open and your throat, which opens up down and back, is still open. Yeah. And, uh, and then use your hand language, whether it's on a mic, like a rocker with a, with a, with a stand where you're going like that. Mm -hmm. Use your hands or if, if you're doing musical theater or something or auditioning without a mic, use your hands with your elbows maybe a little farther back. Mm -hmm. But it's all about two things. Use your posture in such a way that your rib cage is open and your throat is open. Yeah. And then and then in a holistic way, there's really two things to think to, to, to think about before you go on stage. One is set yourself up physically. I'm all that in a Big Mac, right? You know, th that confident posture where you walk on stage, knees first, not nose first. You know, kind of you can play around like crazy, but uh, chest open. And the second thing is, who the heck is this song to? Mm. And what do I want their face to look like as I'm talking? Mm. So set yourself up physically and psychologically. It also works that way in the studio. Oh. For studio vocals. Yeah. Set yourself up at the mic without the pop filter, uh, rather without the cue box and the, and the music stand uh, so far in front that you're having to lean over into the mm. mic. Or if you're a podcaster and you're leaning over into your desk. Instead, bring your knees and uh, body, uh, you know, forward towards uh, the mic stand or under the desk so that this mic is making me go back without even thinking about it, because mm -hmm. otherwise my mouth's going to hit the pop filter. Mm -hmm. So the postural issue of really communicating, that's the other challenge. Make sure your body language is that that says I've got something for you. You're gonna really need it. I hope you. I hope you come come here and listen to me because it's gonna bless you. Instead of, please like me. I hope you. <laughs> I hope you buy all my stuff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it is psychology. And then yeah. what's funny is when you start to assume this posture, you do inside your posture tells your automatic nervous system that you own this venue yeah and your voice starts to free up because it's confident so it all mm. just kind of the snowballs in the right way yeah i i tell students singing is it, it's really psychological it's not just about learning the techniques it's it has a yes. lot to do with the mind it has a lot to do with the mind and posture has a way of telling the mind stuff so if you if, yes if you maintain a particular posture there's a way I don't know if there are people who read, I think it's body language. So they see the way you work and they can already tell you have low self-esteem. 
They see the way you walk and they can tell, okay, that person is very confident. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really all intertwined. And thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, <laughs> our time is really going fast and I still have a few more questions to ask. I want to ask sure. how, how do you take care of your voice? Because it's a question a lot of students ask. And so how do you take care of your voice? Are there things you eat? Are there times you do not eat some things? Uh, those questions. How do you heal from vocal fatigue? Um, yeah. what, at what point do you know you are now vocally abusing? You, you are now abusing your voice or misusing your voice? All those questions are, student, are yeah. questions that box the heart. Vocal students. health. So vocal health in general. So how do you take care of your health, your vocal health? Well, it, your voice is, of course, part of the rest of you. So mm -hmm. anything you do that benefits the health of the rest of you is definitely vocally friendly. Yeah. And, you know, everybody has a different kind of digestive system. Some people can digest dairy. Some people can't. Mm -hmm. uh, one, some things, so some things are particular to people. Like, how do you feel after you eat a plate of eggs? Are you phlegmy? Or are you not? So you've got to know yourself and you've got to know how particular foods uh, hit you. The, the truth for everyone is you need enough protein uh, to have that stable energy and you need enough water, hydration, hydration, hydration. And if you're not allergic to pineapple juice, one of your voice's best friends on a gig date is pineapple juice in your water well, because of the bromelain enzyme. Yes. And if you are allergic to pineapple juice, then try what I call fire water, which is cayenne pepper and lemon juice in water. Oh, wow. So, and that's I, uh, like one part, one part pineapple juice, four parts water. I mean, we're talking about a lot of water, yeah. but that helps the moisture get into the pharynx, the tissues of the pharynx faster than plain water. Yeah. So water, 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 especially the day before you, you were supposed to uh, perform the water that you drink the day before is the is the water that's kind of in your core. It's you you want to drink the day of as well, of course, but the the days before are important too. So a general rule of thumb is half your weight in in ounces for water. Uh, and so that's uh, you know what you eat, what you drink, your sleep is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. you you will never sing as well on three or four hours of sleep as you will if you get six or seven wow i mean you might be able to to do a demo or do a gig but you will not be as good as you would if you got mm -hmm. a decent light night's sleep the cords will swell okay. all right and the other thing is uh to know this okay air i know this is going to be a controversial thing i'm about to say but i'm gonna say it anyway the number one enemy of your voice is air. Mm. Meaning, okay. mm, I know, <laughs> but think of it, think of air, breath, think of it as atomic power. Mm. A little bit can power the grid in all of your, you know, electric guitars and, and your amps and your PA system and all that. Yeah. A little bit too much though, everything's gone, mm. right? Okay. Efficient airstream is the number one saver of your voice. So you've got to get that pressure, that air pressure off your voice. And instead of using air pressure for volume, use resonation. Mm -hmm. And that is everything about what we're talking about, blending these registers. Yeah. What you have to do is open your throat so that you can go th straight through. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is going to make your voice louder then you know that it is until mm -hmm. you hear it recorded back. Your higher voice sounds louder to the person listening in front of you than it does to you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so it, it's, it, it's getting that balance of breath support because you can't just relax and sing. Something's got to give. Mm -hmm. Something's got to power it. Mm -hmm. You've you got to power your voice from the pelvic floor is the way I teach it. Yeah. And then control your your breath with wide ribs which makes your diaphragm nice and wide and stretched taut so that it can't deliver too much air and then you can power it as strongly as you want to but as long as you got control over that power you're fine and it's think of it as compression power so it's a double-sided force 
and you just you you go both ways more if you want a little more volume you support it more and control it more so if it and the thing is you don't have to think too much about breath if your head is balanced over your heels or tailbone you're going to have wide ribs and your weight's going to be balanced on you know your saddle and uh, and your your the back of your legs and so you're going to just naturally without thinking about it have a much better breath engine if you've been using too much breath and that is the number one cause of people ending up with vocal surgery okay yeah if you if you have that habit it's hard to break because you're afraid not to deliver that air mm. because you're having trouble reaching those notes or blending you know you you, you know anytime you think you're having trouble your lizard brain wants to go give me more air. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what you can do about it, I've got a couple of little tricks that work really well. One is to take a candle and put it right up. Uh, you don't breathe in the flame, but, <laughs> but, or the smoke, but kind of put it close to you and try to sing in such a way that the flame dances, but you don't blow it out. No. And if you don't have a candle or you really don't like that feeling of that smoke, the smoke, uh, inhaling that smoke, then you could put your hand right in front of your face Imagine your hand is a glass window pane and don't leave a breath mark on it. Mm -hmm. And you can try to sing really loud or talk really loud and you can feel a little bit of air because air is coming out. Yeah. But try for a minimal, like try uh, for a minimal amount of air and you want to put it really close to your face and you'll notice it makes you back up to try to hold back that pressure. Mm -hmm. But just intending to leave a small amount of air on your hand will cause you to pull. And your hand is going <clears> to, <throat> it'll bring up phlegm if you've got it too, because it opens all the phlegm orifices. Yeah. But anyway, uh, this, your hand is going to turn into the pop filter wow. of your mind. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's, that's um, amazing. So too much. Uh, I was, I've been working on my, the higher part of my voice recently, and I noticed the higher you go, the lesser air you need. Exactly, exactly. Because I've been doing crazy, crazy, a lot of crazy stuff lately. I've been trying to access my whistle. I've been able to hit an F6 now. The only challenge I was having was um, being able to sustain. And I, I, I noticed I was trying too hard. I wanted to sound loud, <laughs> even with, even in that F6 region, I was still trying to sound loud. But recently I began to reduce the amount of air the, the more I progress upward, the more the, the higher I go in range, the less I air. And it's it's it sounds better, it sounds freer, and it feels safer because when I went when I actually started, I was feeling all tight. I was feeling like there's mm -hmm. this so much air coming, then I have to just find a way not to but when I began to go, the higher you go, the lesser air, it felt more mm -hmm. safer and more effortless. Yeah. Than, than right. you think about it think about it those higher note those higher notes have a uh, a smaller wave right yeah and the lower notes have a big wave, bigger wave. okay yeah yes and so i've got a simple phrase that i tell people as long as your head is back and you are you know your rib cage is wide yeah. when you go for a higher note simply squeeze your butt mm. <laughs> <laughs> well <Whoa. laughs> And it works every time. Yeah. And, and the other thing, you, the other thing is, uh, if that if that's not that should help. But it, what may also help is when you squeeze your butt, raise your eyebrows, mm -hmm. because then you lift when you raise when you use that eye language, you lift your soft palate. If mm -hmm. your eyes are poker faced, you're not lifting your soft palate, uh, and your ceiling is down, and you'll never yeah. get as high as you'll never. It sounds funny, but you'll never get as high as you will. If you raise your eyebrows, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean you have to sing buggy eyed, but it does mean that you need eye language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I am, I'm so grateful. We're almost down to the last question. <laughs> I, I love am, these questions. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the way you answer them. It's just so beautiful. And I open, I, I told you my spotlight is 
way you spoke about response. I really, that just has to be my spotlight <laughs> in this It's order. a game changer. It's a game changer for people. I would really love to have you on another pod where we talk about public speaking, but would make plans for that some other time. So for the last um, question, I want to talk about performance. How do singers better their performance? I know we've touched a little here, a little there. We've spoken about posture coming up when you're coming up to the stage. We've spoken about that. So is there anything more you'd like to add about making our performances? I mean, live performances, not just in my closet performance or in the studio performance or my bathroom, <laughs> my, exactly. my, my stadium in the bathroom performance. But when you're actually in front of people, is there a way to perform even more better? Well, I will tell you, it, the secret to real st stage presence, which is what you want, right? You, yeah. People, different personalities do this in different ways and it's, they're all, they all work. Yeah. So what's the common denominator? What's, what creates stage presence? Mm -hmm. And I would argue that it's being authentically in the process of delivering a message to one heart and getting the response back. And you'd be willing to stand on your head or do whatever it is that you would mm -hmm. have to do to do it. Mm -hmm. Some people can be very still and do that. Andre Bocelli. Mm -hmm. Some people go crazy. Mick Jagger, uh, Garth Brooks, you know, uh, Carrie Underwood, uh, uh, you know, uh, other other like John Legend sits at the piano and has this stage presence yeah. because he is without his face he can't sing. Okay, he's delivering messages. He's right in it. He know he knows he doesn't have to feel it every night, mm -hmm. but he knows how to make you feel it if he's mm -hmm. talking to you. So that's stage presence, and it's also that's an antidote to stage fright as well. Yeah. So that's one that's one huge thing. The other thing are really, uh, it's very important to understand how to practice. Mm -hmm. You need to practice technically a lot more and do the exercises and all that kind of stuff. D develop what I call the dance of the melody. Where do you need to elongate that vowel? Where do you want to do a vocal lick? Where do you want to maybe squeeze your butt for that move yeah. up? Yeah. Where do you want, and by the way, you do that for low notes too. Yeah. Oh, Don't wow. shrink for low notes, but get tall. Um, so you want to practice, you know, I say it, it's not a real number, but 10 times technically for one time emotionally. And by emotionally, I mean, you're, you know, when you make, you make that practice run of the song, it's not so much you're trying to feel the emotion is as it is. You're trying to make that heart you're talking to feel emotion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you can't do that too often because it is, an authentic place to be and if you do it too if you do if you try to go there quote unquote too much or you're in the studio and a bad producer is making you sing the song 40 times mm -hmm. what your lizard brain's going to do is go oh, i already told them that if they don't know it by now i mean you know <laughs> and it's going to get bored as is sure. your voice so that's another little uh pro trick really ninja trick i call it and that is only practice performance after you've got your technical practice out of the way. Okay. So that when you're on stage, that's the mode you go in. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to make mistakes and not be perfect on stage because nobody cares if you're perfect. They care if you're actually in the process of, del uh, process of yeah. delivering messages. Yes. And uh, so the perfect part, I mean, that's more for vocal health than anything. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when you when you walk on stage, so so what that requires is that that technical practice be done beforehand, yeah. and also that you you absolutely know your material, mm. right? Yeah, you know, so that you know you you don't wing it on stage, mm. as far and let it let the winging be a magic trick. Mm -hmm. where you totally you totally know what you're doing yeah. and you're making the the audience feel like you're making it up just for them as you're going mm -hmm. along right yeah, yeah so it's a bit of a magic trick smoke and mirrors but uh so it's practicing right i think that has a lot to do with that that can free you totally up to fly in performance wow so um you said something and i still um bring i'm still bringing it back to response 
yeah the, the yeah, response the response you're trying to get will determine how well you um how well you um pour out that stage presence people are after i think i, I if i have opportunity to talk to judges um, judges at vocal um, singing competitions, I would say something to them. So I've been to some competitions and the judge is like, you just stayed in one part of the stage. You did not use, I'm like, what are you talking about? The goal here is to send a message, is to get, just like you said, is to get a response. If my being still, keeping my face emotionless is going to get the response I want. Why not? That's, you know, stage presence itself, whatever you it's, and it's stage presence yeah. itself. So I think someone needs to, if I have the opportunity to, I will, but someone needs to talk to some of these judges because some of them believe if you're not jumping up and down the stage, every corner of the stage, you are just moving. I'm singing a song that has to do with, the, let's say I'm singing a Beyonce song that, okay, okay, heaven, heaven couldn't wait for you. She sang that song for a child she lost. It's a very calm song just I, I think i actually watched the video where she sang that song and her face was just this emotionless way where i'm like so if i was standing on the stage would a judge expect me to run toe and fro singing this kind of song and it's usually a way to be like okay because of that you've lost some points so i think someone exactly. needs to talk to these judges on how they measure up this stage presence or whatever they call it just like you said, whatever you need to do to get the response you need, right. do it. Right. Do it. If it means you standing on your head, do it. Just get that response because that's the that's the goal of that's the goal of your singing communication. You must communicate that thing you need to communicate. You must communicate. So however you need to do to communicate it, go on. Right. Right. So yeah. And when you think about it. Every contest, I don't care what kind of contest it is, with every contest, the goal becomes to win the contest, not to communicate. Exactly. That's it. Oh, because, oh. see, I work with people that have been out on the coast or for the, uh, mm -hmm. of the U.S. for American Idol and, and America's Got Talent and The Voice. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I know, you know, and I've talked to my clients before they even audition. I said, know why you're doing this. You're just, you're just wanting a little bit more visibility. Yeah. Okay. But whatever you're, they're going to want you to go for out there to win the contest. That's not artistry. Mm. That's, that's a survivor of the vocal cords thing. <laughs> so when you come back, I have to, I have to debrief them and get them back into, yeah. okay, let's now let's deliver messages. But just, if, if you just know that, you know, then uh, you, some people can go on stage uh, for a contest and, try to do what we're talking about and deliver messages to the one heart. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, it's best. But if you don't, and if you're just going for the strongest, loudest, highest, you know, most complicated thing that you can yeah. to impress the judges, just yeah. know that's what you're doing. And also know that that's just a different language. It's a different, a different goal. It's a different, and it's not about artistry. It's yeah. not about artistry. And if you think about it, how many of your favorite vocalists that uh, you that move your heart would win one of those contests. Uh, not many. Not many. Not many. Not no, many. that's how come most of the winners have fifteen minutes of fame and they're done. Mm, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's so true. Some of them you wonder what happened to them after the competition. They just uh, just disappear. And it's sad. Yeah. Mm, it's because they did what they did to win the competition, not right. because not uh, um, artistry was was the life. They did it more like a sport. They did like yeah. a sport. So the arts, the arts that keeps the art that gets to people. I was speaking with Mama Jan yesterday and she said something really amazing. She said, because I was speaking to her, that, how do you know, how do you know how to get, how do you know someone is going to be a star? How do you know someone is going to make it? How do you know, let me use the Nigerian term. We say, how do you know someone's going to blow? <laughs> As I always say in Nigeria, I say, how do you know yeah. someone? <laughs> We're like, how do you know someone is going to blow? And she said something, she said, we, she said she doesn't know of others, but she cannot tell if someone is going to blow or if someone is going to make it or if someone is going to be a star. Not because she did not, she, she doesn't notice um, some traits in the person, but because she doesn't know how the audience is going to respond 
to the person. The audience has a huge role to make to the making of a star. So most of them go to these competitions and just do whatever it takes to win the competition. But when they go out there, there's no art. There's no that thing that people can connect to. The audience do not connect to that. And most of them just go out of, just just mm -hmm. disappear after competition. So yeah, yeah, you're so right. Thank you so much, Judy. We, I, 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 I just, if I go on, I will not stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, it's such a fascinating topic. Uh, the voice, well, art in general. And yeah. what's cool is it's more than the sum of the parts, you know, yeah. there's science in it, but there's also magic in it. Yes, there's also a miracle in it. There's, there's yeah. science, mm -hmm. there's a miracle, there's magic, there's, uh, it's just. It's, and connection. It, yes. It, there is, yes. There is yes. this it's connection. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it was it was beautiful talking to you, Mama G Can I call you Mama Judy? Because we do that. Please do. I love that. <laughs> I feel with all my students, I feel like old Mother Hubbard with a bunch of uh, kids. <laughs> anyway. Even though the kids are some of sometimes you know is older older than me, <laughs> my kids. So Mama Judy works. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mama Judy. It was an amazing time talking to you. I I look forward to the next time we're going to talk. I look forward to the next time we're going to talk. Thank me you too. so much. Me too. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So it was amazing talking to Mama Judy. Thank you. So hey there, my beautiful listener. Okay, this is the last part of my talk with Judy Rodman. I had such a good time and I'm sure you did. So one more time, if you have not like, why did I say one more time? Of course, I'm still going to say this like, I don't know, infinity more times. If you have not followed us, especially on Spotify, please do. And like I said earlier, do check out Mama Judy on Spotify, all things vocal. There's some jewel there. You need to take possession of it, especially if you want to truly make musical quantum leaps. You can also look out her blog if you are the reader type and not the podcast the listener type. I, or if I just somehow was able to make you listen to my podcast but you prefer to read you can always go to her blog there's so that's a mine there and I need you to go there and mine you can also check out her social media handles you can check her out on Instagram she's also there and come on follow those who you need to follow to learn that which you need to learn so we're going to be moving to the next part now and that's going to be our part with mama jan it was amazing too although it was quite short but there's so much to glean from it as well okay see you later bye